So, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. In, right. in d doing an interview so, with you again, um, if you can talk about this meeting as yeah. being kind of uh, an it's example of what the communication something. committee has accomplished, something will occur. then that makes something sense will both for you call me when you're done with your <laughs> okay. both for the documentary and for the communication committee. Eleven. Eleven. Well, so, what do you think the points are that we should talk about about the successes that happened today? I live near to go. Well, I was just saying that I think. Um, <laughs> I was just saying that I think uh, Roz brought up the issue of governance herself. The issue of governance yes. got talked so about. So I will call you before I get Adam and I'll just come to your house after. Roz, mm -hmm. um, which in the past when we actually worked on the case study and talked about governance, he kind of or about student governance, about having an actual an actual real student governance, mm -hmm. he had sort of dismissed that pretty quickly. Yeah. She asked a lot of questions, mm -hmm. um, basically about what do you want. <laughs> right. And I wanted to be like, we are the supplicants who have no power. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we want as much as you'll give us. <laughs> yeah, but then, and, yeah. It just, <laughs> but then he actually yeah. acknowledged that Adam Weinberg wants the students' voices to be part of the decision making process. Not necessarily always the end decision, but like to have yeah. those voices have input because, and he actually finally admitted that students, uh, that he values the voices of the students. He's and always admitted that. There was a shift in well, tone. Yeah, he, that's he, it. He would always say these, the, the specific things the that you're saying, he's always I think said he would have always said, but yeah. there was a shift in tone. Then maybe I just finally believed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's that's a really key point. I think in the in the belief sense is that mm -hmm. you know there's so much mistrust going on in the organization, and that you know I think you sometimes you can deal with um, mistrust by politicking, and in, instead of actually sort of you know kind of a faking till you make it kind of thing, and so I think in the past he might have been faking it, and we kind of saw that. But yeah. in this in this shift, I'm seeing less of a um, less of a of, of of a fake. Either the fake or just the fact that the communication um, channels weren't there for me to really be able to hear his real to intentions hear it, yeah. behind it. Yeah. So if I don't remember it being said, you don't you don't remember what you don't believe, mm -hmm. and if, or you don't hear. And there, maybe the reason I didn't hear it or didn't believe it or whatever was that I just. I didn't know the guy and didn't really know his intentions and the the fact that the communications have been opened and you know the yeah. I think it's important to try and concretely pinpoint where this shift may have appeared and what I would say for that is there were two things which popped into my head. One is that um, frequently when he talks about like wanting students to have a voice. He then talks about reasons why they can't, or reason what mm -hmm. reasons why that's difficult. Oh right, right, right. Like, right, going, right. like kind of a going back and forth. Okay, that's how I remember it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember that piece. <laughs> and I mean, in this in this conversation, actually, we all sort of did that, which mm -hmm. I thought was interesting, um, which I think sort of disarmed him a little bit. Um, but we weren't talking about how it can't happen. We were talking about how it can. Well, we, we were, were talking about concrete, we were talking specific. about both actually. We were talking about areas where it can't happen, which is what he says. He he he'll bring up. He'll, Layla said that. Yeah, Lay, Lay, and Layla said that, and I think I heard that happen somewhere else too. I think actually you said something. Else. So it wasn't having, that exactly. But it, it was, was more of a logical, productive conversation that actually led into that shift of tone being expressed by Adam. But at the at the end, he kind of summed everything up, and I felt for the first time this sense of that. He's really going to do it. He's going to work with some of the students that will be here over the summer, and he's going to work with the committee in the fall. So the other thing that he said, which indicates a shift to me, was um, that he was looking for, he was asking questions to get at concrete action mm. items. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, right. Which means that, and I think this is really the most important point, it means that he that you are seeing the evidence of him. Of him wanting to do something. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. want, yeah. and wanting yeah. students' in, uh, opinions in that. Yeah. Um, now, at, 
you know, I, I would also say that Adam is not um, necessarily wanting to do these sorts of things on the timetable that we would want him to. And I would say um, that he, that is not necessarily his top priority. And Roz pointed out that it's not really his place for it to be his top priority. It is, it should be the place of a dean. Um, and she did say we're going to get you guys a dean. Right. Um, in, in the restructured, that was, another, that was another concrete thing that he said, is talking about having a dean, which was having the position be restructured more as a student advocate. And which is another thing that, that came up is, is some openness to the idea of there being student advocates and student governance right, right, or, right, right. so that students can feel like they have a um, input. And Ross wants to re-examine the, uh, the role of the student trustee and think about... Well, I'm not sure if she really wants to do that. <laughs> it was interesting that she was at least open to discussing it. Sure. And she made a point to say, okay, so what I'm understanding right. that the student trustees don't really have a voice and they don't actually represent the students. It's the same page that you're on. So she didn't actually go past that, but just right. that she, you can see the wheels turning up there that, uh-huh, you know. So that's something that the communication committee next year or if there's a dean and students have a way, whatever these channels are for, for student voice, that's a point that students can bring up. Well, I do think that she very much does not, and she and Adam still would very much not want students to get involved in the board affairs or world learning affairs. Student trustees are also our affairs. Like our sure. representation is also our affair. You can, you can make this. You can make that argument, and it makes sense. But but my point is is that if we're looking at like where they have had movement, I don't think that's a place where they have. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think I think some of that is just sort of related to sort of what 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 I think Dana had mentioned is that it's we kind of jump to the board. Um, not so much because we don't understand boards, but because we don't know what this institution is, and it is a visible yeah, piece. Yeah. You know, um, of what that of what that means. You know, and um, they have power. We know yeah. they have power. Okay. Yeah, it's just that they don't want to use their power directly with us. Right, and that, and that's fair. Yeah, no, and that's totally fair. Um, but you know, it's you know not having sort of the institutional understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know not having the institutional understanding of what what these what this stuff is, uh, or even sort of explained. Right now. In some way, that, that we, we don't, we just don't know, and because we don't know, we kind of make stuff up or grab at visible pieces, and then go for anything that anyone wants us to have. Right. So, I I would be cool to see sort of the role of, gov of student governance restructured so that it's not quite so you know, focused on who's throwing a party and how do you have the money to do that, you know, um, and that. So that that voice actually has sort of an official channel, because there's official channels on paper, but they're not official channels in function. Mm -hmm. um, so because we shouldn't actually have to get to the point where we have to sit down and have this massive conversation right. after you know months of planning and years of you know year of research and uh, right. in order to sort of address this issue, like we shouldn't have to skip ahead. We should actually be able to rely on our structure. So they have one of those, and we can't yet. So I'm really excited to see the shift. Um, as far as the specific shift, I mean, I think TEDx had a huge thing to do with it um, because the day you know I was communicating with him before that, saying you should show up for this, dude, you should show up for this, um, and being very sort of you know advocating for this thing being amazing because I'd been involved in it. And I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be amazing. Um, and it, I was really sort of sad that he wasn't able to make it, but I sent him a live stream link. And so he watched the afternoon of it um, over on, on the, the internet. And what he was able to see at that point was finally proof, like legitimate, actualized proof of the value, I think, of what our institution is capable of. And how he was able to see it. it I think it spoke his language enough that he was able to see that there was a benefit to fostering this sort of knowledge, education, this sort of exchange, and that, you know, he had he had the, the philosopher's stone that got him to understand. And by continuing sort of this sort of positive action and positive things that sort of support what we're here for, 
I mean, we generally came for education. I don't know, did you come for education? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, you know, and so <laughs> that if you came for, if you came for education, all, and what would you came for? Why are, you know, how can we build goals or structures or systems or events or actions that support what we came here for? I'd like to see that. I'd love to see that. And I'd love to see that more. And I'd love to see that goal-oriented awesomeness become what drives drives us, it drives our bus up the hill. It's you know, this kind of awesome stuff. And because we can do it. We can totally do it. Or we can sit there and gossip and smoke up behind the hill. But you know, I'd rather see something awesome. That quote goes in the documentary. <laughs> You know, we could we could we could gossip and we could smoke up behind the hill, but you know, we're awesome and we're gonna. I just really feel like for the first time there's hope and the first time there's possibility. Possibility of what? Possibility that student voices will be heard and knowing the value of those student voices that they're going to impact the campus in such a positive way mm -hmm. and help this place to be the to the height of its potential mm -hmm. so check out how do you feel Dana? <laughs> aside from really tired um yes i'm glad the semester's over no um i am still withholding my judgment <laughs> <laughs> I think Adam is very good at saying nice things, and mm -hmm. I think that he did sound like he meant them more this time than the last times. But this time he said them in front of Roz. And I think he... That, that, that's not going to have any effect, I don't mm -hmm. think, because Roz is never going to really interact with students in general. Mm -hmm. um, sorry to be Debbie Downer. No, no, but no, that's cool. <laughs> you also do she, no, don't do appreciative inquiry, so that's cool. I do appreciative inquiry. <laughs> it's just not my strong suit. <laughs> um, no, I think I think the fact that Roz didn't know how much was being communicated to the students from what she saw mm -hmm. and what she thinks faculty see um, is a big indicator of the fact that mm -hmm. <laughs> he can pretty much do whatever he wants and they're not going to have any idea. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what she said his job is, is to run the institution. Mm -hmm. So, I think that if he does what he says he will this summer and... Mm -hmm actually has some input in the systems that are being designed mm -hmm. and not just getting some outside consultant to design mm -hmm. systems which won't actually work here, mm -hmm. um, which I'm a little afraid of, then I, I, I do have hope. Mm -hmm. I got a definite sense that a part of what was going on was um, an evaluation. And that from Adam's perspective, that was partially what was going on, was he was actually being evaluated by, by, in front of Roz. I mean, the fact that, like, like I got a sense of that in what he was saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so what's your question? Well, no, just sort of ch checking out a little bit. I mean, it's interesting that you sort of noted that evaluation, but, you know, he knew he, he, knew he was in, in, you know, what, what seat he was in. And he's, he's not stupid. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, I, in terms of like the objective of what was supposed to be accomplished yep. here, I think it, it, I think we definitely high marks on that. Um, I th from my perspective, I mean, the objective here was to create a good feelings between the person who was going to be the chair of the board and students who historically have had a bad name. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we definitely did that. Yeah, I give her a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren gave her a hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Lauren and Dan. Three of us did. And Sarah. Sarah. Laura and Dan and Sarah mm -hmm. gave Roz a hug. Um, Which means she's a nice person and she's okay. <laughs> or at least she's a nice lady from Cambridge. I think, actually, Roz was kind of pointing out something which... Is, is really a, a strong attitude that I have, and that is that students should think a little bit less as if they're reliant on Adam or the board. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think going forward, looking at, I mean, there were some definite there was some definite shifting in Adam, and I think that's a very valuable thing. I think it's important to not treat that as being the end, the end all be all. Um, and that uh, really, what this means is that students should be more involved mm -hmm. and push more. Yeah, I find it very interesting about sort of the, the pushing more. I think it's also sort of fine-tuning the way that you choose to push here as a student. I think that there's a lot of skills that we have and a lot of skills that we're still just sort of learning and fostering and kind of like digging around in. And I'd love to make sure that whatever, you know, pushing we do uh, is, is actually productive towards the goal because I think there's so much in the, the medium and the message get all sort of intertwined. Um, and so I would love to love to see that awareness come out of this as sort of we you know start to go, okay, well, the, but there's steps past this. We just opened the door. There's a whole yard and probably some angry dogs and some flowers <laughs> and a Girl Scout. Um, and I should get some sleep. But I was really excited. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to sort of go on this communication committee journey with everyone, you know, um, and really start to sort of identify the problem. And I really hope, really, really hope that students sort of take the model that we have and really begin to build it beyond what we have to continue the work. Because you don't fix communication by saying, okay, communicate. That doesn't work. I want to see us not do that because that would be awesome. And then I can go be an alum and then you can look to me and go, you're doing awesome things. I'm like, oh my god, you're doing awesome things. How do you be so awesome? And over whatever facilitated communication path that makes that possible. You know, and I say, I can give you a job. I know this person who can give you a job. Dude, please, give me a job. Give me a life. Give me something to do. Country to go to, a thing, thing to be a part of, community to, to witness and report back on, work with humbly in that SIT way, which is unique to us. Yeah. Yeah. About Adam feeling evaluated, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> About Adam, um, potentially feeling evaluated by Roz that, that you mentioned earlier. I think it's fair to say that we did invite him to his own meeting and Roz to her own meeting and Adam sort of invited himself into Roz's meeting. Just saying. Yeah. The, the Don't email feel was bad like, about that one. <laughs> yeah, the email was, you know, as a matter of protocol. And I, I found that, you know, that, that there's usually protocol when there's some fear of the unknown, that they, mm -hmm. as administration mm -hmm. and board, they are as susceptible to this craziness that we are susceptible to. Right. Well, we, I mean... You know, process. That lack of trust issue. You know, right. You know. And, 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 you know, it's also just, you know, they, they are responsible for stuff that is way up here. And, you know... I'm going to bring an uncomfortable chair to the meeting tomorrow. Do it. <laughs> and ask Adam to sit in it. This is more seat. Well, he, I mean, he's sit, he sat in no, the same chair these. that we did here. These no, no. Coming. You want to do these the desk? more comfortable. You want to do the, the desk one? Yes. Has to be a At desk. The conference table? Would you <laughs> <laughs> the desk at the conference table? Mm -hmm. And then he'll see how ridiculous it is to have desks at oh, tables. But we don't know. That's true. I had them when I was a kid all the time. <laughs> desks at tables? Oh. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> I missed what you were saying. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is that is funny. Yeah. Good job, team communication. <gasps> Go so, team. So yeah, I hope I hope at least the internet helps. I <laughs> hope you know I'm gonna scan in all the bio stuff and all the documentation. I've been gathering all of the stuff that I found. I would like That's a done. copy of your case study and any sort of additional commentary. Didn't I send it to you? No, no. I want the case study, but I would love sort of like. Uh, commentary Abstract. reflections on like the year since then. Right. Can you recap? 
So we're talking about <laughs> decision-making capabilities in levels that they're not currently existing. Mm -hmm. To me, Roz, and she didn't, she didn't actually express a lot of what she values. In she the asked meeting. questions. She mostly asked indicated questions. indicated them. Yes. So. Yeah. And to me, she seemed like she was actually more open to shared, shared decision making, shared government sort of ideas than most people, than Adam, definitely. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, means you don't have to, to hold back as much on that and say like that that's so high in the sky. It's not entirely. No. I mean, she, she raised the problem, which is a very real problem, that we're only here for a short period of time. And she kind of gave that as being, well, that's the reason why we don't have it. Um, that's mm -hmm. not the reason why we don't have it. Anyways. <laughs> but I mean, like, the, like Tony's idea of, um, of uh, st student, what did you call it? You student it, advisory board, student alumni advisory board. A student alumni advisory board. Um, where there are, there's kind of an intergenerational mm -hmm. uh, students and alumni being involved in campus issues. Um, that to me seems like a good, good place to start yeah. from. Well, I think, you know, and it's, it, it gives, you know, I think it's just sort of part of functioning channels. You know, like make the channels functional. Uh, they exist. Make them exist better. You know, through communication but, uh, what? and understanding what? and resistance okay. and not just hearing one story and going, yay, one story, I heard it, it must be true. <laughs> Why is the camera on me? You're the one talking. Shh.